from what the court indicated, this was restricted to the aggravator issue? All right. Where are we going with this, Mr. President? I'm just connecting up that the gun that was found in the apartment was connected to the four casings that were found as well. If the court doesn't need to hear that, I can move on. Okay. It goes to the two murders. Right. I'll let you explore that very briefly. Okay. All right. Was there an analysis done of the casings that were found? Yes. And was there a determination made as to where or what gun fired those casings? Yes. What gun fired the casings? The handgun that was found inside the residence. Got it. In the area that the officer had seen Cleophas Cooksey making a movement with his right hand? Yes. You indicated that there was, other than the three, there was no one else located in the apartment, correct? That's correct. And there were two individuals that were found deceased? That's correct. Are you also aware of Cleophas Cooksey Jr. having a prior conviction? Yes. And do you know what that prior conviction is for? Manslaughter and armed robbery. And he was, in fact, convicted and sent to prison for those, correct? Yes. If I might have a moment, Your Honor. Yes. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. That's all I have, Your Honor. Ms. Crumpton? Okay. Okay. Good afternoon, Detective Cervantes. Good afternoon. Have you testified previously about this case? Yes. Testified in front of the grand jury? Yes. When was that? I don't recall the exact date. Was it last week, two weeks ago, last month? It was a couple of weeks ago. It was, I believe, in the month of December. And to your recollection, did you provide the grand jury with the information you provided here today, if you know? For the most part, yes. Well, what was not for the most part that you provided them? I don't recall. It was the basic information that I just provided today. Basic information? Yes. Did you go to the crime scene? Yes. Did you author any reports in this case? Yes. Have you already authored those reports? Yes. You've written them? The ones I authored, yes, I've written them. You've taken notes? Yes. And did you bring your reports here today with you? No. Were you told not to bring your reports today? I wasn't told either way. Were you told you were told to bring them? No. You knew you were testifying today, correct? Correct. Well, possibility. How many times have you testified before? Quite a few times. How many years have you been a police officer? Over 12 years. Okay. On other occasions when you've come to testify, what happens before you come to testify at a hearing? Judge, I'm going to object. I don't think it's relevant to whether or not there are aggravating factors in this case for the court to consider. This goes, apparently this line of questioning is in some way attempting to question the detective's credibility, but she's only here today to testify as to the aggravating factors, which are two homicides and a prior serious offense. So I would object to this line of questioning. All right. I'm going to give you some leeway, Mr. Kunkel, because you're making a record for it. You're exactly correct, Your Honor. And for the record, it also does include her credibility as well, but also, yeah, making a record about what we have in front of us here. All right. I'll give you some leeway. Thank you, sir. So, Detective, prior to testifying on other occasions, you know about the interview process, correct? I'm sorry, with what? You know about having to submit to interviews prior to trials and other cases that you've done? Correct. That's nothing that's unfamiliar to you, correct? No. And that didn't happen in this case today, did it? With me submitting interviews? Yes. Yes, I submitted them today, actually. I'm sorry, you submitted what today? The interviews. Of interviews you did of witnesses. I'm asking about your personal interview, an interview you would submit to, say, with defense attorneys prior to going to trial. You've done that before, correct? I have not been requested by the defense to do an interview. Right. And prior usually to coming to court on a matter, your police reports have been disclosed to the defendants, isn't that correct, and their attorneys? 
that's not my responsibility. So I'm not asking if it's your responsibility, Detective. I'm asking you if you're aware that that's what happens in the normal course of coming to court to testify. Again, I submit my reports. To the county attorney's office, correct? What happens from there, I don't have any knowledge of what they share. Are you mean to tell me you're sitting there today, you're not aware of the fact that your reports are provided to the defense attorneys for a defendant in a case? They are at some point. Judge, I'm sorry. I'm going to object again to the question being misleading and not relevant. One at a time. So you can only take down one at a time. I'm still going to give you a little bit of leeway, but we're getting pretty far into this now, Mr. Connell. I guess the question is this, Detective Cervantes. You've testified in other trials, correct? Yes. Other hearings, correct? Yes. You're aware of the process by which you provide your written reports to the county attorney's office? Correct. And you're aware of the fact that those reports get provided to defendants prior to there being hearings and trials? You're aware of that? I am not aware if they're prior to hearings. I do know that they're prior to trial. Okay. Do you know if any of your reports were provided to the county attorney's office? Yes, they were. And when was that? When we submitted the case. And when was that? Within 48 hours of his initial appearance. So in December, maybe by December 20th of 2017, your reports were provided to the county attorney's office? Yes. And your report would be the original police report in this case? Yes. And how many supplements did you do to that report? There's hundreds of supplements. I'm asking how many you did. I don't recall exactly how many supplements I wrote. More than five? Judge, again, I'm going to object to this. I'll avow to the court that we disclosed the reports that we obtained when this case was filed. And if Mr. Kunkel and Mr. Barron didn't get them, if they went somewhere else, I have no way of knowing that. But I can tell the court that they got what we had. And that is the extent of it. And, again, I don't think that this line of questioning from counsel has anything to do with the issue at hand. Okay. I think you've made a pretty good record on this, Mr. Kunkel. I beg to differ, Your Honor, about whether the record is pretty good because someone else at a court down the street is going to maybe read this transcript and decide what the record is. But for the record, though, I would demand that the county attorney's office produce the reports that they've had in their hands for well over a month, including, as the detective just testified to, one original and at least five supplements. I don't know why those weren't provided prior to today for the hearing. Despite Mr. Eisenberg's avowals, our office has been assigned since day one. We have an address in the book. We have a very regular streamline for getting those reports. I'd ask you again for a stay, and I'd ask for a reproduction of those reports now so we can proceed with the hearing under proper fashion, as we discussed prior to starting this hearing. The state was aware they had those reports for over a month. They could have brought them today. We're entitled to them. We should have them at this point. That's what due process requires, Your Honor. We wouldn't do a hearing in federal court this way. We wouldn't do a hearing under Simpson this way. The 44 pages you have, though, you said you had 44 pages of police reports. That's not Detective Cervantes' report. That's a report regarding what was collected at the scene, a swab here, a blood swab there. That doesn't do anything. We want her written reports, and that's what I'm asking for now. I don't understand why the state would come, and I'm not questioning Mr. Eisenberg's avowals. They have the reports. They can go get them down the street at the office. We can take a half an hour break, and then we can read them, and we can proceed with the hearing properly. That's what we asked this court to do prior to starting. And quite frankly, they've had them a month. They've had them a month. We should have had them. Again, Judge, I'm going to object to this entire soliloquy, if you will. Mr. Kunkel has suggested that I'm not lying to the court backhandedly. What I told the court, what I've told Mr. Kunkel is we have given them what we have, and what they have is what we have regardless of what the detective may have just testified to. We haven't gotten anything else. That's number one. Number two, none of that, it's all discovery. None of it is relevant to today's proceeding. They have what we have. We are here for a specific purpose, 
I limited my questions after Mr. Kunkel objected to the issue at hand. And I would simply ask that we move on and that Mr. Kunkel limit his questions to the issue at hand. None of this is relevant. I don't know where her reports are. They're in between offices or whatever. But you don't have them. Well, the normal course, we get an email from a paralegal from the county attorney's office saying there's discovery available. It's on paper or DVD, CDs. And someone picks it up within 24 hours and it's on our desk. That hasn't happened. There's not been one email. Mr. Eisenberg has not made one representation to the court that they indicated to us that they have these reports. And, again, they knew the hearing was scheduled today in front of you. They could have brought the reports. We could have had them yesterday. Judge, we don't have the reports. I don't know how many times I can say to Mr. Kunkel, regardless of what Detective Cervantes has just testified to, I'm telling everyone here. And if you'd like to put me under oath, you can put me under oath. The 44 pages that they have are the 44 pages that we have. And we've provided them. We provided them as quickly as we did. And we have not received anything else. I don't know how many more times I can say it, Judge. They have what we have. I think we made a sufficient record on this, Mr. Kunkel. Okay. Go ahead and proceed. If I misunderstood your answer for the record, I believe you just said you provided those reports to the county attorney's office. Is that correct? Our court liaison sends it over to the county attorney. Now, did you go to the crime scene? Yes. Did you make those observations yourself, or are you telling us that Officer Othamore, or Othman, am I saying that correctly, what he saw? Othman. So what you just testified two moments ago, was that what you were telling us, what he saw or what you saw? It's what I saw. Okay. Now, when you got there, how late did it take you to get there after you were called out? We arrived within an hour. Who's we? The people, the detectives who are getting called out to investigate. And who is that? Who went with you? Who was with you? My sergeant. And their name is? Sergeant Vasquez. And who else was with you? Again, Judge, I don't know what this line of questioning has to do with the issue at hand. The detective has testified as to what she saw, and that was sufficient for the court, that was sufficient for Mr. Kunkel, which is why he objected when I tried to get into anything else. He's already established her credibility, or perhaps in his mind, her lack of credibility. Bottom line is, who all was there is not relevant to these proceedings. What she saw, she's testified to, and what she's testified to are the aggravating factors that the court is to consider. All right. I'm going to sustain the objection at this point, Mr. Kunkel. Very well. Detective Cervantes, were the bodies moved prior to you getting there? I don't recall, no. Did you have to fight your way through the door? They, well, like previously said, when the officers made entry, they had to shove the door open. So the question is, when you got there, had the bodies been moved? Prior to me getting there, yes, because the officers had to make entry. So backing up a moment, what you were just testifying to here is what someone else told you. And who was that? Was that Officer Othman about the bodies being against the door? Because you didn't see that, did you? No. Okay. So just to clarify your earlier testimony, you didn't see that. This is what someone else told you, correct? Yes. Now, this neighbor, you indicated they. Was it more than one, or was it one person? It was a female and a male. Okay. Did you speak with them? I was, I did not speak to either of them. Do you know who did? It was another detective. And that detective's name would be? Again, Judge, this is beyond the scope. We're trying to clarify the extent of the hearsay, Judge, and who said what to whom here. All right. I'll allow it. I don't recall the detective's name. Do you recall the neighbor's names? I already said I did not. Were they specific anything further about these voices? They recognized them. They knew Mr. Nunn and they knew Ms. Cooksey? Yes. Did they indicate for how long? I don't know if that was asked. Did you, you didn't speak to these two people, did you? No. So you don't know anything about the prior relationship between Mr. Nunn and Mr. Cooksey? What their relationship was? Yes. I heard that 
the family was otherwise quiet and Cooksey came and went. Did you hear anything specific about what the argument or what the voices were yelling that night? And just what I told you is something about the devil, evil, Satan, something like that. Something like that. You don't recall any more specifics than that? I don't remember the exact evil word that they used. That evil word? You, you did know you were coming to testify today, and you don't know this? Yes. So that's yes, you don't know this? I'm sorry. So you don't know what was really said? Is that what you're telling us? I'm summarizing. My question is, you knew you were coming here to court today to testify, possibly. Asked and answered, Your Honor. And you didn't take any more time to know this? I don't think she answered. Go ahead and answer. That I knew that I was coming to court and possibly testifying? Yes. And again, did you review anything before coming to court? Yes. What did you review? All the supplements that I have and the incident report. And you left those back at the office? I did. Did you go over that with Mr. Eisenberg and Ms. Charbel before you came over today? Today? No. Did they speak to you today before you testified? Yes. Did you tell them much of what you told us here today? That I didn't bring my reports? Yes, I did. Did they ask you to go get them? No. Did you see them taking any notes when you were talking with them? No. Now, these voices about demons, is that all that you recall in your summary? Yes. Was there anything else from these neighbors about what the struggle or what was going on, what the argument was about? They did not hear a physical struggle. Did they see who was holding the weapon? Did they see if Mr. Nunn had the weapon? No. Did they hear anything else? They heard a series of gunshots. They heard Edward Nunn and Cooksey uh, exchanging words, and then they heard another series of gunshots. What words did they say? I already told you. Just demon? It was some word saying evil, whether it was Satan, devil. Beelzebub? I'm sorry? You familiar with the term Beelzebub? Was that one of the words? I, I, what's the word again? Beelzebub, Judge. She, judge, she's already testified. She doesn't what she, know it, so. She's already testified what she can recall about what she heard right. multiple times. Objection sustained. You mentioned something about bells. Is that one of the words you used? I'm sorry. For Did you just say bells, or was that in your direct testimony evil or bells? Bells. I thought I heard you say bells. Something no, about I bells? No, I say bells. Okay. Did you know anything else about anything prior to the shooting? About the case? No. Yeah, that's it? Yes. Well, I mean, prior to the shooting in the apartment, did you know anything that had happened prior to that from any other neighbors? We don't know anything until we arrive on scene. We're told whether, we're just told the address that we need to respond to and okay. if the death investigation or a homicide investigation. We don't know until we get there and we are actually briefed by other individuals. Now, with respect to Mrs. Cooksey, Ms. Cooksey, the female victim, is there any indication, was her, were her hands swabbed for gunshot residue? No. Not at all? No. How about Mr. Nunn? No. So, you don't know if it's possible Ms. Cooksey shot herself? Objection, Your Honor. Overall, you can answer. It's not apparent that she shot herself based on the two gunshot wounds that she suffered. Based on that, you're indicating someone else shot her? Yes. You don't know if it was Mr. Nunn or Mr. Cooksey, though? I don't know. Did you sit here today? That's your testimony. You don't know? Based on my experience, I would say that Edward Nunn did not shoot her. But you already testified in front of a grand jury, right? Yes. What'd you tell the grand jury about that? Objection, Your Honor. Well, be more specific about. Very well. 
What did you tell the grand jury about the order of how people were shot in there? Do you remember that? You only testified in front of the grand jury a few weeks ago, correct? Judge, I'm, I'm, at this point, I'm going to object again. It doesn't go to um, the aggravating factors. But not only that, the court's already indicated that it's going to take this matter under advisement and review the grand jury transcript when the grand jury tra transcript is prepared. So I don't think questioning the detective about what she may or may not have said to the grand jury is appropriate at this